Hello, everyone. Dr. Victoria Skirbo here speaking to you from the Seeds of Transformation Healing Center in Wareham, Massachusetts. We're going to do a card reading on the solstice. Today is the winter solstice in the Northern Hemisphere and the, and the uh, uh, summer solstice in the in the Southern Hemisphere and the winter solstice in the Northern Hemisphere. I said that right, right? Um, <clears throat> The sun today ingresses into the sign of Capricorn, and that occurs here on the uh, east coast of the U.S. at um, uh, 4.48 p.m. Um, and so this is the time when um, the sun is lowest in the sky um, in the northern hemisphere and highest in the sky in the southern hemisphere. It is the longest night here and the shortest day and the longest day and the shortest night on the other side of the world. So it is a time of change. It is a world point, the first degree of all the cardinal signs are world points. And usually there's some significant thing that happens. Uh, but this reading is for the season. Uh, and that season will, this reading will sort of go until um, um, the first day of spring or the first day of fall, depending on where you happen to be, um, which occurs when the sun moves into Aries. So we have some time and that this uh, reading is for the period uh, from winter uh, or from solstice to equinox when the light and dark are equal. So. Here uh, in the Northern Hemisphere, um, with winter coming, it seems like um, for a lot of people, it's gonna be a very challenging winter. Um, so let's take a look. I'm using the top deck because uh, this is serious times and it requires a serious deck. All right, I have my Capricorn painting right there, you can see. And if you look in the back there, you can see that beautiful um, piece of art, I guess, leather art that Ona sent me for Christmas. Um, homage to uh, Ju uh, Jupiter and Pisces and the Feast of the Seven Fishes, which in the Italian tradition of which I grew up in and Ona also grew up in, uh, is a time when we eat fish on New Year's Eve. It's, it's, I think it's a Sicilian tradition. I'm not sure it's true of the whole of Italy, but of course, Sicily is an island and there's all kinds of fish. They didn't have a lot. It was kind of a poor area, but they do have fish and they do have a lot of wheat. Uh, in Sicily. Beautiful, beautiful um, part of the world in olives. <laughs> All right. So we start this with the Four of Cups. The Four of Cups. In this deck, it is called Luxury. Um, this is a more positive uh, depiction, I think, of the Four of Cups than in other decks where there's more of a sense of divine discontent. Um, so there is this, um, the four is about, is about a structure and we have the structure of our feelings. And of course, four is a little constricted. It's the energy of the square. So there's a, there's a containment with four. And so we feel our emotions feel very contained at this time. There may be some dissatisfaction for some people. Let's see what challenge is that. We have the seven of um, pentacles. So the challenge is a pentacle challenge. The seven of pentacles, this is called failure. This card is called failure. Um, but um, I, guess the, I guess the challenge might be here. How do we keep a certain emotional poise uh, as we face the things that perhaps we didn't get done or that uh, we see as failures. Uh, there is a monetary connection to this. Of course, Pentacles always deals with some sort of monetary issue. So there can be just the simple lack of 
and the sense of lack that, that we all seem to have um, because of circumstances mostly beyond our control, right? Beyond our control. We have to live in the world that we live in. Let's see what's uh, rooted, what's at the root of this. And the root of this is choices, choices. Okay, let's see what's in the past. We have the Queen of Wands. This is the powerful woman. This is the, um, the queen of the hearth, the home hearth, fires burning passion. Um, we got to see, certainly here in the US, um, women in their power um, standing up to um, what traditionally would have been um, the sort of patriarchal um, power over kind of energy. Um, we saw it in um, we saw it in people like Nancy Pelosi. We saw it in people like Liz Cheney, um, Letitia James. So there's a lot of we have to keep in mind that um, despite the fine, I think the financial issues that a lot of people are having now, we have come a long way in the sense of in the empowerment of the feminine, the empowerment of the feminine. What's in the sky? We have the two of wands. This is dominion, Mars and Aries, this card. So um, we have to remember that we have a certain amount of control around our, not so much our situation that we find ourselves in necessarily, because some things are out of our control, but how we react and respond to the situation we find ourselves in. We have dominion over our world through the view that or the perspective that we see our world through and i think that that's what this choice card is the lover's card the choices that you make it's your choice how you want to experience your life even in the worst of situations of course it's much easier when things are nicer and better of course as without saying um, but ultimately even if you're in this place of luxury and fullness and all of the rest, it doesn't guarantee that you're not going to feel like a failure. So it's not really a, um, it's not really a circumstance, um, but it is how you react and respond to those circumstances. How do you take what it is that is coming to, to you and how do you take hold of it. The two of wands is not, is not just, um, it's a creative card, right? Uh, it's balanced, the two is balanced, but it's a, it's a, a, a commercial, it's this commerce in this card, right? There's commerce. So there's ideas coming together here. So there is a lot of opportunity out there for you to sort of align, line up perhaps with uh, others of like mind or people who uh, are working towards the same goal. And in the immediate future, we have happiness. So happiness. So I think this indicates that most people really just want to be happy. And sometimes circumstances prevent that. Um, and yet we can find some monicum of happiness, no matter what situation we find ourselves in. So um, I, am, I feel like these cards are so far giving us a sense of uh, be happy with um, what you do have, be grateful, uh, practice gratitude. If you don't have gratitude for what you have, you're not going to have, you're not going to get any more than that, right? Because you're, you're turning your back on the goodness that's coming in, however small uh, or large that might be. Remember the four of, uh, four of Cups, the first card in this reading is about a certain amount of divine discontent, like, oh, I have everything and I'm still not happy. Um, I'm, still, I'm still looking at, I'm looking at the world through the things that I have failed at, as opposed to um, the things that maybe 
make me have us feel satisfied, filled, right? Filled. Um, how it's seen from the outside, we have the Empress. The Empress is creative imagination, creative imagination. So this says to me that we have the power of creation. We have the power of co-creation as it were. And that's not something we can forget. Our domestic situation during this period, the princess of discs, this is uh, taking small steps, uh, planning, take, you know, moving in a new direction now. She does, she is in a situation where things are a little spiky. She looks like she's like living in the brambles here. So it's not without its, its dangers. You do need to be careful how you utilize your resources. Uh, you do need to think about it. Um, and there will be some trial and error with it. So, so it's okay. So, but, but take things slow when it comes to the financial piece this season. Hopes and fears, the universe. Well, we, we want it all, don't we? This is also about endings uh, and new beginnings. And so depending on where you are and what situation, an ending might seem like a good idea. It might seem like a terrible idea. That, that'll, you can decide what that is. But there is this, this knowing, um, whether it's good or bad, whether it's a, a fear or, or a hope, that uh, there is a shift and a change. And of course, there is. Of course, there is. there's all kinds of shifts and changes happening this season, one of which Saturn is going to move into Pisces and Pluto is going to move into Aquarius for the first time in 240 something years, right? Um, so it's big changes ahead and those changes start in this season, in this, in this, this uh, winter slash summer season depending on where you live in the, in the world. And the outcome is success. Success, this is the six of pentacles. It's about balancing the scales. It's about people getting what they deserve. So there is um, actually, this. these are sort of very positive cards. I mean, there really isn't a, a you know, negative card in the lot. So this is a time of, you know, if you feel like you've had a failure, um, it's simply, failure is simply a prerequisite for success. You can't have success without failure because most of us don't know how to do things in the best way possible. It's a learning curve, right? We're on this planet to learn. But if we apply ourselves and we focus on that which brings joy into our lives, right? What, where is your joy? You have to choose it. You want to be a you want to be a professional victim. You can choose that too. I doubt it'll bring joy into your life. And then we have the Magnus or the uh, the magician coming up next, and that is um, your ability to focus. This is focused intention. This is uh, utilizing your talents, balancing the elements. You have to balance all four elements and have a focused mind to get what you want manifested, manifested. So these two planets, these two planets, excuse me, these two cards together are in my estimation, very positive indications that this, that this winter of our discontent, this difficult winter perhaps is actually an opportunity for us to live a more, perhaps live a, a, a more constrained life, but a happier life. Like really, what is it that you need? And I think that you're gonna get some answers to that. So in that, in that case, um, I think that's very, very positive. So we have the Knight of Cups underneath it. So this is sort of promises. This is the ideal, right? The Knight of Cups is very idealistic, not always realistic. We have the Five of Pentacles still worrying about our finances. And then we have the Prince of Cups. This is the Prince of Cups in this, this deck is actually the King of Cups. And uh, the King of Cups is an energy that understands um, and appreciates the need for family and the need for coming together as a family. 
to help one another, to help one another. I really feel like um, this is going to be a season of um, evaluating your own your own sense of what is important, what's of value, uh, gratitude and the like. So these are pretty nice cards. I'm I'm pleased. They could have been a they could have been terrible, right? So let's uh let's pick a um let's pick a um let me see if I can find where I have them. I want to pick a uh oracle card. I want to pick let's um let's take a look at um okay sorry i'm having like a minor i'm having a minor <laughs> lapse here uh i wanted to take a i wanted to get an oracle card so i'm going to use the illuminated earth oracle We'll just pick some cards from that and see what the message is from the illuminated earth. Now, of course, Capricorn is an earth sign, so this is a perfect deck to get just a little bit more information. What is the season ahead? The season ahead, the next December, January, February, and March. So the next months oops i'm just gonna pick uh oh let's let's pick um yeah let's pick three cards three cards okay. multiverse multiverse this reminds us that there are many levels of um reality that we live in, that there are uh different levels of awareness some people are aware of of multiverse <laughs> the multiverse is a thing guys um there's a movie uh, everything happens every time well everywhere something uh, about the multiverse. Renewal, it's a time of renewal. And the tempest, the storm, the illumination. So we can expect connections to other realms, to other dimensional frequencies. Um, and of course, that's gonna get even more so with Pluto in Aquarius. We're going to come to understand that those ideas, those those experiences, um, and what it means for us as humanity as Pluto moves through Aquarius. But we're going to get a little taste of the multiverse. This is a time of renewal, so it is a time for you to take the time that you need and to renew your strength, right? Renew your strength, and then the tempest for the storm to come the storm here is an electrical storm and what does it do it opens us up it opens us up perhaps to the multiverse so we might even hear some more information about space stuff now that we're sort of meandering around around to the planet and and you know around the moon and you know thinking about going to mars and all this other stuff um and then with the this the space telescope that we have, the new space telescope that we have, seeing pictures of the universe that we hadn't previously seen, a whole new expanse is opening up, uh, up to us. Remember, Jupiter, the planet of expansion, has just moved back into Aries. And so it's a new 12-year cycle. The last time Jupiter moved into Aries was about, I think it was 20, 2010. And uh, that was the Arab Spring. And we, here we have Jupiter in Aries again, and we see that there's the uprising in of the uh, feminine. What is it? Women, life, and peace, I think. Women, life, and peace. Um, I think those are the three words that they say, um, or freedom. 
women, life, and freedom, something like that in, 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 in Iran. So, um, and, and, you know, these, these burgeoning um, democracies or these burgeoning of young people wanting to live a better life, um, I think one of the things, especially here in America, is we're great for taking these burgeoning um, democracies and, and, and smashing them. <laughs> Um, to our own ends. So we have to be careful of that, that that doesn't happen, I think. But beyond that, this isn't a political reading. I, I feel as though this really is about, um, I'm very excited for the future. It's gonna be chaotic. It's, 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 it's not gonna, you know, there's no longer, uh, it, it, you're, on, you're in the flow, <coughs> you're in the flow. And if you try to hang on to what where you've been and you want to stay there, but the flow is 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 not is, is not allowing that, you can really hurt yourself by not letting go. So there is a need to to sort of go with the flow and go with the direction of of your destiny uh, with your eyes wide open and your heart wide open. So I feel like that's important to say at this time. So I hope you have, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you have a lovely holiday season or whatever holiday you might, um, might celebrate. I hope you have a great winter for those of us in winter uh, and a beautiful, uh, perhaps fire-free summer for those of, who are, um, who are in, the, uh, in the Southern hemisphere. You know, we got into this we got into this mess because of choices we made and we can get out of this mess by the choices that we made. But we have to work together. One of the things that governments do to a certain extent and nations do is they separate us, but we're not really separate. And that's, I think, something that we're gonna really come to understand um, as, as we move forward. Or if we don't understand, we're gonna learn the hard way. So, um, you know, the butterfly effect is alive and well. <laughs> Make better choices, um, come from a place of uh, an open heart and an open mind um, and discernment. Not, you know, you're not gonna fall for every plan or cockamamie idea, right? You have to know what you can do, what, you, what your resources will bear, what your resourcefulness can bear. Um, it's up to us to make the world a better place. And it's gonna be up to the people, um, not, not the leaders. The leaders have to feel, hear the people. And so uh, make sure your leaders are hearing you. <laughs> All right, guys, take care, much love, and have a wonderful, wonderful season. Namaste.